It was a bright and sunny day at the Surf Beach in California, a popular destination for locals and tourists alike. It was a long stretch of golden sand dotted with brightly colored umbrellas and beach chairs. The water was a vibrant turquoise blue and the waves were gentle and inviting. There were several volleyball nets set up on the beach and people could be seen playing games and lounging in the sun. Music played from portable speakers, adding to the festive atmosphere. The beach was flanked by tall cliffs on either side, creating a natural amphitheater that amplified the sounds of the waves and the laughter of the people on the beach. The cliffs were covered in lush green foliage, providing a striking contrast to the golden sand and blue water. At one end of the beach, there was a small harbor where boats could be rented for fishing or sightseeing. At the other end, there was a rocky outcropping that jetted out into the water, providing a popular spot for cliff jumping. There were several amenities on the beach, including restrooms, showers, and a snack bar. Lifeguards were on duty throughout the day, keeping watch over the water and ensuring the safety of the swimmers. A group of teenagers had decided to go for a swim in the ocean because it was a hot summer day and they wanted to cool off in the water. They had spent the morning playing beach volleyball and lounging in the sun, and as the day wore on, the heat became almost unbearable. Among them was 17-year-old Alex, who had always loved the water and was an excellent swimmer. The water looked inviting, and they could see other people swimming and splashing around, so they decided to join in on the fun. They had heard rumors that there were sometimes sharks in the area, but they didn't think much of it. After all, they had been swimming in the ocean before and had never encountered any dangerous predators. As they waded into the water, the teenagers felt the coolness of the ocean wash over them. They laughed and joked, splashing each other and enjoying the freedom of being in the water. They swam out further and further, enjoying the waves and the sun on their skin. They didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, and the water seemed calm and peaceful. Then suddenly, Alex felt a sharp pain in his leg. He looked down to see a massive great white shark, its razor-sharp teeth sinking deep into his flesh. The force of the attack knocked him off his feet, and he struggled to stay afloat as the shark dragged him underwater. The group of teenagers witnessed a horrifying and violent attack as the shark's teeth sank deep into Alex's flesh, causing him to cry out in pain. The other teenagers screamed and tried to swim away, but the shark was too fast. As the shark circled back around for a second attack, its jaws gaped wide open as it prepared to strike again. This time, it bit down hard on Alex's torso, severing his body in two. The teenagers saw the full extent of the damage it had caused as their friend's lifeless body floated to the surface, torn apart and mangled beyond recognition. They watched in horror as the shark continued to thrash around, hungry for more. The other teenagers in the group realized they were in danger and quickly began to swim away as fast as they could. The water around them was turned up, making it difficult to see where the shark was, but they knew they had to get as far away as possible. As they swam, the teenagers could hear the shark's powerful thrashing in the water behind them, which only spurred them to swim faster. They knew they couldn't outrun the shark, but they hoped to create enough distance between themselves and the shark to give them a chance to reach the shore. Despite the terror and panic they felt, the teenagers remained focused on swimming and tried not to let their fear get the best of them. They swam in a zigzag pattern, hoping to make it harder for the shark to follow them. Eventually, after what felt like an eternity, the group reached the shore. They staggered out of the water, panning and trembling with fear, but relieved to have escaped with their lives. They looked out at the water, watching as the shark continued to thrash around, its massive body visible in the churning waves. The attack of the great white shark sent shock waves through the beach, and people quickly realized that they were in danger. As the other teenagers in the water tried to swim away, people on the shore began to scream and shout, urging them to come back to the beach. The beach quickly became a scene of chaos as people scrambled to get out of the water and call for help. As news of the attack spread, more and more people on the beach began to panic. Parents gathered their children and ran for safety, while others called for help and tried to get as far away from the water as possible. Emergency services arrived on the scene quickly 
including ambulances, police, and rescue teams. They quickly assessed the situation and began to take action to control the situation and help the victims. Lifeguards were the first to respond, jumping into the water to try to reach Alex and the other teenagers who had been swimming with him. They could see the water turning red with blood and they knew they were dealing with a serious situation. Paramedics and ambulance crews arrived next and they immediately began to tend to Alex. Despite their best efforts, however, they could not save him as he had been bitten in half by the shark. The police arrived on the scene soon after and they began to cordon off the area preventing people from getting too close to the water. They also searched the surrounding area for any signs of the great white shark, hoping to capture or kill it before it could attack anyone else. Meanwhile, rescue helicopters circled overhead, searching the water for any signs of the shark. They used thermal imaging cameras to try to detect the shark's body heat, but they were unable to locate it. As news of the attack spread, more and more emergency services arrived on the scene, including Marine patrol units and Coast Guard vessels. They scoured the water for any signs of the shark. The beach became crowded with onlookers, and many people were outraged that such a dangerous predator could be lurking so close to shore and called for increased measures to control shark populations. For the family and friends of Alex, there was no comfort to be found in the aftermath of the attack they were left to grieve the loss of a young life cut tragically short and to wonder how something so horrific could happen to someone so innocent. The memory of that day would haunt them forever, a reminder of the brutal and unpredictable nature of the world we live in. The year was 1883 in the remote coastal towns of Western Australia. Pearl diving was a way of life it was a dangerous job, but for the native people, it was a tradition that had been passed down for generations. One such pearl diver was a young man named Jera, who lived in a small village on the coast. Jera was an expert diver, and he had spent his entire life diving for pearls in the deep waters of the Indian Ocean. He was fearless and had never been afraid of the dangers that came with his job, but one day, his luck ran out. Jera had been diving for pearls for hours, his body accustomed to the deep ocean waters. He had already gathered a good amount of pearls, but he wasn't done yet. He wanted to collect as many as he could before returning to the village. As he dove deeper, he suddenly felt the sharp pain in his left thigh. He thought he had hit a rock or a piece of coral, but when he looked down, he saw a large shadow moving towards him. The shadow grew bigger and bigger, and he realized with horror that it was a shark. Jera's heart raced as the shark closed in on him. It was a massive creature with rows of sharp teeth and a menacing presence. Jera knew he was in trouble, and he had to act fast. He tried to swim away, but the shark followed him, its jaws opening wide. Jera knew he had to fight back. He had heard stories of divers who had successfully fended off sharks and he hoped he could do the same. He punched and kicked the shark in its nose and eyes, hoping to stun it, but the shark was relentless and it kept coming back. Jera felt the shark's teeth sink into his flesh and he screamed in pain. He could feel the blood gushing out of his thighs and he knew he was in a life and death struggle. He desperately tried to grab his spear, but the shark kept attacking him. He fought back with all his might punching and kicking the shark in the nose and eyes. The shark was relentless, but Jera was determined to live. He managed to get his spear and jabbed it into the shark's side, causing it to retreat. The shark recoiled in pain, and Jera used the opportunity to swim away from the shark. With blood pouring from his wounds, Jera managed to swim back to the surface. His fellow divers saw him bleeding and pulled him onto the boat. The attack had been brutal, and Jera's wounds were severe. His thighs were torn apart, and he had lost a lot of blood. But he was alive, and that was all that mattered. His fellow divers rushed him back to the village where the elders treated his wounds. Despite his injuries, Jera refused to give up pearl diving. It was the only way he knew how to make a living, and he loved the thrill of the hunt. He returned to the ocean a few months later, 
but this time he was more cautious. He had learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of the deep. Years passed, and Jera became a respected elder in the village. He shared his knowledge and experience with the younger divers, warning them of the risk and teaching them how to protect themselves. He was proud of his life as a pearl diver and grateful for the lessons he had learned, even if they had come at a great cost. And so, the tradition of pearl diving in Western Australia continued, with each generation passing on the skills and knowledge of their forefathers. Jarrah's story became a legend, a testament to the bravery and determination of the native people who lived along the rugged coast of the Indian Ocean. Toshiro was part of a crew of experienced fishermen who had been working together for years. They had all grown up in the coastal town of Yokohama, Japan, and had learned to fish from their fathers and grandfathers before them. They had caught all kinds of fish, from small anchovies to large tuna, and had even managed to snag a few exotic fish that had fetched a high price at the local fish market. But there was one fish that had always eluded them, and that was the shark. Sharks were known to be one of the most elusive and dangerous fish in the sea, and catching one was considered a feat of great skill and bravery. Toshiro had heard that there was a high demand for shark meat in the city, and that it fetched a premium price at the market. He knew that catching a shark would not only be a personal accomplishment, but it would also be a lucrative business opportunity. Despite knowing that it was illegal to catch sharks, Toshiro couldn't resist the temptation. He believed that he could catch one without getting caught by the authorities and was willing to take the risk. He began researching the best bait and techniques for catching sharks and spent hours on his boat scanning the horizon for any signs of a shark. He even invested in special gear, including a stronger fishing line and hooks to ensure that he would be able to catch the shark once he found it. Toshiro was determined to catch the shark, not just for the thrill of the hunt, but also for the potential profits it could bring him. He was willing to break the law to achieve his goal, even though he knew the risk and consequences of getting caught. That is why when Toshiro heard that there had been sightings of sharks in the open waters of the Pacific Ocean, he suggested to the crew that they try to catch one, knowing that it would be a risky but potentially lucrative endeavor. The crew was looking for a big catch to make up for the slow fishing they had experienced earlier in the week so they agreed to Toshiro's suggestion, albeit reluctantly. They set to work, preparing their gear and bait for the shark hunt. They had a large boat equipped with a powerful motor, and they scanned the horizon for any signs of a shark's fin. They knew that sharks were attracted to schools of fish, so he scanned the water for any signs of movement or activity. They also checked their fishing chart to identify areas where the water was deeper hoping that this would increase their chances of finding sharks. After a few hours of searching, Toshiro spotted a large fin breaking the surface of the water in the distance. He knew that this was likely the shark he had been looking for, and he quickly steered the boat in its direction. As they approached the shark, Toshiro could feel his heart pounding in his chest. He knew that sharks were dangerous and that any misstep could be fatal, but he was determined to catch the shark and he believed that he had the skills and experience to do so. Toshiro, being the most experienced fisherman in the crew, took the lead and began taunting the shark with his fishing pole, hoping to provoke it into attacking. But the shark was not easily fooled. It circled their boat, watching him carefully and waiting for an opportunity to strike. Toshiro cast his line, using a large piece of fish as bait. He waited patiently for the shark to bite, hoping that he had chosen the right spot and the right time to catch it. The tension on his fishing line was palpable, and he could feel his adrenaline rising as he waited for the shark to take the bait. Finally, the shark made its move, lunging at the bait with lightning speed. Toshiro pulled his line away, trying to get the shark to come closer to the boat so they could catch it. The crew was excited, and they cheered Toshiro on, watching as he fought with the shark. But the shark was too quick, and it turned on him, attacking his arm and dragging him into the water. The crew quickly sprang into action, pulling Toshiro back onto the boat 
and attempting to save his life. They saw that Toshiro had suffered serious injuries, with bite marks on his arm and torso, and blood was gushing from the wounds. The crew knew that time was of the essence, and they immediately began to administer first aid to Toshiro. One of the crew members applied pressure to the wounds to stop the bleeding, while another crew member checked Toshiro's pulse and breathing. The crew realized that they needed to get Toshiro back to shore as soon as possible so he could receive proper medical attention. They radioed for emergency assistance and were able to get in touch with a Coast Guard who sent a rescue helicopter to their location. In the meantime, the crew worked tirelessly to stabilize Toshiro's condition. They covered him with blankets to keep him warm and hydrated him with fluids. They also monitored his vital signs closely, taking turns to make sure he was comfortable and stable. When the rescue helicopter arrived, the crew helped to transfer Toshiro onto a stretcher and lifted him onto the helicopter. They stayed with him during the flight back to shore, offering words of encouragement and comfort. When they reached the hospital, the crew stayed by Toshiro's side, waiting anxiously for news of his condition. Despite their best efforts, however, Toshiro's injuries were too severe, and he passed away a few hours later. After Toshiro's tragic death, the crew was deeply affected and mourned his loss for several weeks. They had lost not only a colleague, but also a dear friend. The incident had a profound impact on the crew, and they realized that they had taken unnecessary risk in their pursuit of the shark. They vowed never to put themselves in danger again and to prioritize safety above all else. The crew decided to start a safety training program for fishermen in their town in order to prevent similar accidents from happening in the future. They worked with local authorities and fishing associations to develop safety protocols and trainings and they shared their experience with other fishermen. Despite the tragedy, the crew continued to fish and work together, but with a renewed sense of caution and respect for the sea. They had learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of their profession and the importance of safety, and they were determined to never forget it.